What's up everybody, Jeremy Weiss here with Weiss Tech Hockey and in this video I wanted to uh, touch on some basic power play setups. So for this particular video we're going to talk about the overload and uh, a few different options that you may be able to work from your overload. Um, when you're setting up your power play, um, it's really important to put the proper personnel in the proper positions based on what you're hoping that your team accomplishes with uh, whatever given setup that you've got. So I know that sounds like a mouthful, so let me uh, kind of just explain what I'm talking about here. Um, first and foremost, you want to make sure that you have the proper handed shots uh, in the proper positions. So I've gone ahead and instead of using positions, I've just labeled these guys left-handed or right-handed. And for example, on this one, I have an RL. That means it doesn't really matter, um, right-handed or left-handed um, for that particular spot. So with our over overload, we want this guy to have a right-handed shot um, in this particular overload because we've got a left overload here. Um, I found that, and this is just a little bit of philosophy, you can take or leave this, um, but I found that it's really effective to set up on the same side every time. Um, and you, you may switch it off, like you may have power play one set up a left overload and power play two set up a right overload, but using the same unit, the same group of guys in the same positions, and then just giving them a whole bunch of different options within those positions, um, you can very easily run just about every single thing that you need to run from one side. That's my personal opinion, take it or leave it, like I said. Um, but uh, you know, I've had really good success doing it that way because there are just so many different options, even from only one side that uh, you, know, you really can, as long as you read and react properly, you can make a lot of stuff happen. Um, so for this particular setup, we've got a right-handed guy here. That's so that if he breaks through the middle um, for a little give and go there, he can be on his forehand for a shot. We've got a right-handed defenseman here, um, basically for the same reason, so that as he walks in with it, um, you can have a nice shot. We want this guy to have a pretty good one-timer and some good speed. We want this guy to have a really nice hard shot um, and good puck control. Especially on a power play, you want your defenseman out there to have really good puck control because they're going to be handling the puck a lot, and uh, you don't want them giving up odd man rushes on your own power play. That's just uh, a really demoralizing thing to have happen to you. So uh, we want good uh, smooth handling puck control here with good shots and decent passing. Their defensemen on, on the power play need to be all round type players. Um, same thing over here. Good hard shot, good puck handling, um, and uh, a, you know a good one-timer really helps as well there. We want this guy to be just the tough as nails. Um, you know, if you've got a big, strong guy that's got a good shot, that's got a you know a nose for finding the rebound, um, that's the really good type of guy that we want there. Um, garbage goals are going to be like this guy's heaven. He's going to get uh, so many garbage goals from this position. Um, but he's gonna have to pay a price for it, especially as you get into those higher levels of hockey, you know, juniors, you're not gonna stand in front of the net without paying a price. So he, this guy needs to be tough, he needs to be strong, balanced on his skates, and able to drive home uh, hard rebounds. But uh, he will get a lot of goals from this setup. Uh, and then we've got this guy. This guy needs to be a, a good puck handler and especially a good passer because he's gonna be the one kind of uh, orchestrating a lot of the stuff that's happening here. So that's your basic setup for your overload. It's called an overload because all the guys are basically on one side of the ice. And from here, you've got a lot of different options. Um, you can work the puck. You can, uh, I, you know, I'm not going to draw a whole lot of arrows here. That just gets everything confusing. So you can work it up to this guy, work it to the point, uh, maybe pass across for a shot on net. Um, the main thing is when you're, when you're working it around the perimeter, as soon as the forwards see that a shot is about to happen, um, get to the net. That's, uh, you know, we want to uh, be really strong on driving home rebounds. Um, another really, really cool, uh, effective way of doing it is have these two guys play, uh, play pass with it until you suck in that defenseman. As soon as the defenseman commits or gets sick of waiting and tries to uh, come and get you, then it goes down. This guy drives through, okay, gets a pass back. And that's where I'm talking about that little give and go um, and a one-time shot on net. <clears throat> that works really well. Another thing that works is if you can't get that defenseman to bite, then what I've done, and uh, you know, especially if you've got two forwards that really work well together and can read off each other really well, um, I had a buddy that uh, that we worked really well, worked really well together, and we were able to do uh, do some good things because of it. But you can have this guy start walking out. Um, this guy drops down in. So it's almost like you're doing a little crisscross, and then um, in the process, this guy can do like a little drop pass. So I'm not going to draw the drop pass, but basically you're just kind of almost handing off the puck like this. After you hand it off, then the player who had the puck from the corner originally, he drives through to the seam. The other guy 
uh, drives low and a little pass out in front and another one-time shot. So in that case, having a right-handed shot there is probably a good thing. Or if you're a lefty, you can open up into a mohawk and that works as well. Um, there are a lot of different ways of playing with this. There's some cool ways of having the uh, having this uh, <clears throat> defenseman sneak into the back door. <coughs> Excuse me. If this guy's got some guys and he's causing a lot of trouble in front, a lot of times um, the focus can be so heavily on this guy that there's room for this guy to slide in the back door and uh, open up a pass across there. So there are a lot of different options, a lot of different ways of playing with this, but uh, the overload, that's kind of a basic baseline um, uh, power play setup that uh, that works. It's a really good one, especially uh, to teach the young kids, but I think it's good to have a few different versions of a power play setup that you can tweak based on what the other team's coverage is. So uh, that's your overload, and um, we'll talk about a few other versions in other videos as well.